Today on the list, how to prepare for standardized tests, travel the world through social media, and the beverage that may help with allergies. We know that EGC works very well to quell the reaction to allergens, the histamine release. Plus, the perfect vacation spots for families affected by autism. They've got a resort guide that tells you ahead of time a sensory listing of what you can expect. But up first, explore the fascinating history of cuisine. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Rose. Of course, food is a central part of our lives. It can bring us together to share good meals and good times. It's also a way we can look back and learn how our ancestors lived centuries ago. Now, the man behind the YouTube channel, Tasting History with Max Miller, just released a new cookbook, and he's telling us how we can taste our way through the past. So pull up a chair, because that's our featured story at the top of the list. We've evolved over time, but one easy way to put yourself in someone else's shoes is through food. There are very few ways in my life that I can mimic the life of a medieval knight, but I can make very close to something that they would have eaten and actually eat it. Max Miller is the creator and host of the viral digital series, Tasting History with Max Miller, where he recreates dishes from the past using modern tools. Mead, this time on Tasting History. And he just recently released his cookbook, Tasting History. So there are over 60 recipes in the book spanning from ancient Babylon from 4,000 years ago to I think the last one is in the 19 teens. Now he's sharing with us what we can learn from food, starting with its importance. We take it for granted today because most people can just go to a grocery store and buy whatever they want. And if not, they can order it online. And even though it's hard to imagine, that hasn't been the reality for much of history. That is so, so recent. And you look through history and wars have been started. I mean, the age of exploration was in a large part the age of finding spices for food and finding a cheaper way to get food. And as time goes on, everything we eat tells a story of who we are. What I think you learn with every single dish that you're making is not only the historical tale, but also then when you taste it, you are put in the shoes of that culture, that person, that time period, better than almost any other other way that I can think. For instance, you could have a taste of what it was like to be a passenger on the Titanic. Some of those survivors carried their menus with them in their coat pockets so that today we can get a glimpse into those last happy moments aboard Titanic where they enjoyed food such as peaches in chartreuse jelly. Thinking of history as more than just a series of names and dates from the past. Which leads us to how it's food that can really bring us together across all cultures and timelines. Whenever I make a dish from Renaissance Italy that is a meat dish that has a bunch of sugar in it, that's crazy. And then I say, well, do you eat barbecue sauce? Because that is a sugary sauce on meat, and it's very medieval the way that it's made. Even modern day pizza has connections to things made 500 years ago. My taste buds are not all that different, if at all different, than somebody living in the Middle Ages. So it's like a instant connection there spanning across centuries. We're tasting history at the top of the list. This time of year, we roll out the red carpet to celebrate the warmer weather, and then uninvited guests like pollen, dust, and allergens crash the party. Over-the-counter medications can be pretty pricey, so Zach Perry rounded up some surprising and inexpensive allergy hacks. Spring has sprung, and along with the flowers, birds, and the bees, we have another fact of life to deal with. Allergies come up because the body has decided that what is normally innocuous to most of us is actually a problem. And we haven't figured out why this works. Wellness expert, Dr. Rand McLean has some tips and tricks to get our symptoms under control. And the first one involves our old pandemic pal, the face mask. You can block most of the allergens using these masks because they do block not only most of the particulate, but they block the, the even the smallest ones. While you can use an N95 type mask, he says for most of us, it's overkill. Depending upon the severity of your allergies, you can use just a standard surgical mask. 
Our next buzzworthy allergy hack is to eat local honey. Dr. McLean says this works kind of like a flu shot or other inoculation. The concept is you're inoculating yourself in a small dose regularly with something that would normally in a higher dose cause a reaction. He says to try a tablespoonful each morning during allergy season. And it's very important that you get it from your local source. And so presumably that's gonna contain plenty of those allergens, the pollen that you may be allergic to. Your local farmer's market and natural food store are a great source of honey in your area. Dr. McLean's last tip is to drink green tea during allergy season. We know that EGCG, one of the active components in green tea, works very well to quell the reaction to allergens, the histamine release. Another compound in green tea with hypoallergenic benefits is theosylin. That has been used for ages for bronchial spasms. So those with bronchitis, and of course those with allergies that are having the same reaction, that helps open up the breathing passages so that you can breathe better. While these hacks can help with seasonal allergies, sometimes we need a little extra help with over-the-counter meds. While the over-the-counter uh, oral products can be somewhat helpful, is the intranasal is much better. Products like Flonase and Nasocort use corticosteroids to reduce inflammation and open breathing passages, and he says the nasal application helps them to work faster. Pushing away pollen and pollutants with allergy hacks. If you have a loved one who has autism, you know how important it is to find places where there's less stimulation and more relaxation. April is National Autism Awareness Month, so Jackie Denker found some sensory-friendly vacation spots for your next getaway. Traveling with an autistic friend or family member means you need to keep everyone's needs in mind. There are also crowds, sights, and sounds they're not familiar with, so it can be a stressful experience to travel when you have someone with autism in your party. But we're helping you avoid that stress because we spoke with Emily Kaufman, AKA the Travel Mom, to find three sensory-friendly vacation spots. Starting with Beaches Resorts. When it comes to resorts that cater to their autistic guests, Beaches Resorts in Jamaica and Turks and Caicos are pioneers in that space. They are the first resort company in the world to complete IBCCES training and autism certification allowing specialized service, custom dining options, and have a partnership with Sesame Street and Julia, who is a four-year-old autistic girl. Julia welcomes the children and their families with engaging activities like amazing art with Julia and enjoyable character experiences. You can get a Beaches buddy who's accredited and trained in how to help somebody with autism on the property. Next, Legoland Theme Park. When it comes to theme parks, they can be incredibly overstimulating for visitors with autism. And Legoland throughout the country in New York, Florida, and California have teamed up to become certified with autism programming. And if you're not sure whether a ride or attraction will be too loud or just a sensory overload, they offer sensory guides. They've got quiet rooms where you can decompress and use weighted blankets. They've got tactile equipment and dim lighting. So there are perfect respites for when Legoland becomes a little too much for their autistic guests. And lastly, what cities should you visit? We have made so much progress in creating great vacation experiences for folks with autism. Cities are getting on board and being trained as a whole. Cities like Mesa, Arizona have become autism certified. They've got art museums, theme parks, restaurants, outdoor parks, different venues that are all certified in how to best make their guests with autism comfortable. And another city, Palm Springs. They teamed up for everyone to go through training so that they can create a fun, fantastic, calm and rewarding vacation experience for everyone. Time to unwind with sensory friendly vacation spots. Still to come on the list, how to prep students for academic testing. They're not spending time trying to figure out where everything is and how it's set up. And money saving tips for vacations. I've traveled to almost every US state and national park and these are some budget travel hacks I've learned along the way. Plus, one of these days these loops are gonna 
new country artists use social media to change the industry. What these artists represent is the future. All that and more ahead on the list. Welcome back. Now, recent studies are showing that students are struggling with standardized tests more than ever. Scores are down and stress levels are up. It's a concern for kids, parents, and teachers. So with testing season right around the corner, Jackie Denker's looking at how we can prep for success. Standardized school tests can be a major cause of anxiety for kids and parents alike. But there are some ways to reduce the stress. Standardized testing has just been one of those scary things that everyone seems to hate. It's basically like the end of the year test that is made to seem like it's everything. To level up your students' testing skills, we turned to award-winning teacher and founder of TopScoreWriting.com, Lisa Collum, for some tips. For starters, reframe the experience. They've been prepping and practicing and working hard all year long. Instead of putting the focus on, you have to get this score, you have to pass to get to the next grade, it's more should be on, you know this, now's your time to show off your skills. Get them to focus on motivation and confidence. Reminding them, this is nothing new. So if you're having these conversations of, this is what the test is gonna be on, how do you feel about it? This gives them the chance to say, in all honesty, I've got this, but I'm struggling with this. And then it could be maybe the teacher offers after school help or maybe a tutoring situation. Next, try a testing day dry run. They need to know where they're testing and who they're testing with before test day. Because? Think about this. Many students have accommodations or for whatever reason on test day have to go to different classrooms, but all year long they've been with their teacher in their classroom. And then suddenly if they're pulled out on test day, that can be upsetting for a student. So let the students, if they have not met that teacher before that they're gonna be going with, go to the classroom, meet the teacher. And she encourages you to ask if your student can do a practice test in that room with that teacher. Finally, let the kids see a practice state exam page. Tests are set up differently, and I think it's important for students to see what it's gonna look like. For example, the writing prompt in some states is in the middle of the test booklet. I don't think students should find that out on test day. They should know that you only get three pages of writing instead of four. It's about knowing the format in advance. Even something as simple as math with gridding your answers, practicing what that grid looks like. So when they open it on test day, they're not spending time trying to figure out where everything is and how it's set up. You can find your state's assessment page online. And they have test information, testing dates, rubrics and most states have some sort of online portal where you can go and take a practice test. A plus ways to prep for test day. With the weather getting warmer, it's time to get out and start checking off those bucket list items. We've got three adventurous influencers inspiring us to do just that right now. Coming in at number one, Rio Travelers. I guess Peter Pan was right, growing up so wasted time. So I think I'll fly away, set a course for brighter days. Husband and wife Trent and Sarah Anderson are traveling all around the world and taking us along for the ride. <laughs> and inspiring us to get out and live life right now. They make travel look so much fun. At number two, Renee Roaming. Renee's love for adventure started when she was just five years old and her parents took her and her sister on a three-month road trip throughout the east coast of Australia. Her love for adventure never stopped. Woke up in the middle of the night and I noticed my girl wasn't by my side. Could have sworn I was dreaming for her, I was feeling she even gives out some travel tips. Travel to almost every U.S. state and national park, and these are some budget travel hacks I've learned along the way. Firstly, flying is so expensive right now, so I suggest road tripping instead. This will also allow you to take more stops along the way. Next is to bring or make as many of your own meals as possible. You know what? I can attest road trips are definitely the way to go. And last on our list of adventurous influencers, 
consuming couple. We touched down in Croatia and straight away went in search of the local food. It didn't take long as our taxi driver from the airport said we have to try the restaurant on the mountain cooking food under hot iron bells. Lauren and Cy Willis, whose journey actually started on a plane, are sharing the most bucket list places to eat. Eating around the world. Without leaving New York City. Today we're at Buna Cafe in Bushwick for all vegetarian Ethiopian food. And daring us to try different cuisines. We're at Ariana in Hell's Kitchen for food from Afghanistan. We started with balani, a fried flatbread which you can get with various fillings. We got potato in this one. Then we had mantu, the Afghan version of the extremely popular beef dumplings. Okay, dumplings, they do them differently in every culture and they're all really delicious. Those were some adventurous influencers who are inspiring us to check off those bucket list items. And coming up, we spoke with the co-founder of the Black Music Action Coalition about three rising stars you should be on the lookout for in the world of country music. Don't miss it. Watch the list anytime. You ready? I'm ready. Learn to play a new sport. Here we go. Try a new recipe. I just like a warm hug. I love it. Find money-saving tips. So you're saving money while you're making money. All on YouTube. Plus, you can watch The Guest List, our exclusive online-only series with extended cuts of The List's celebrity interviews. Go to YouTube.com, search The List Show TV, and hit subscribe. We are back, and on today's playlist, the Academy of Country Music and the Black Music Action Coalition recently introduced a new program to empower the next generation of artists. So Christina's highlighting a few rising black country music stars that you may be seeing and hearing a lot more of. The country music genre is evolving, and these are the up-and-comers making it happen. What these artists represent is the future and the possibility, so I think we should be inspired by that, because I am. Willie Stickers, a.k.a. Prophet, is the co-founder of the Black Music Action Coalition, an advocacy organization that recently teamed up with the Academy of Country Music to create the On-Ramp program which helps foster inclusivity and empowerment for the next generation of black artists. What we hope to achieve with this program is discovering more of that new talent and discovering more of those opportunities. He introduces us to three rising stars you should know about, starting with Breland. I'm going cross country, I will stop running till I find where I belong. His debut full-length studio album titled Cross Country was released last September, and his work stands out for mixing elements of hip-hop, R&B, gospel, and soul with country music. I think that he brings so much to the genre just for his level of authenticity and who he is as an individual. I am gonna Next up is a sister quartet known as the Black Girls of Country TikTok. Meet the Boykins. The group has built a large following on the platform in just over a year for sharing covers of country music hits along with original tracks. Platforms like TikTok and YouTube allow people just to celebrate and love the music that really love it. So I love the fact that they're using the new platform, the new technology to kind of usher their movement in as well. We're wrapping it up with Blanco Brown. Yeah. Gonna do the two step, then cowboy boogie. Grab a sweetheart and spin out with him. In 2019, he released the song The Get Up, which went viral and rose to the top of Billboard's Country Songs chart. When I seen the video and how the influence of hip hop and the influence of black culture, you already see him bridging that gap and merging those worlds and showing that all music is black music. A spotlight on outstanding country music talent on the playlist. Christina loves her country music, and luckily, she doesn't go all wine snob and describe it as banjo forward with a hint of rhinestones on the back end. Because trust me, it could happen. We're talking about the winification of everything. Last on our list is next. Welcome back. It's time for what's last on our list. And wine snobs have always existed. Talking about wine that's dry or fruit forward or has notes of tobacco and elderberry. And it was easy to ignore them as highfalutin dandies whose vast wells of 
underlying insecurity were aged in charred oaken barrels. But then the wine snobs came for my beer. Your options in beer used to be regular beer or light beer. That was it. But then came the full-blown craft movement with heritage hops, aseptic fruit purees, and preferred food pairings. You know what I used to pair Schlitz beer with? Everything. Stop trying to make beer precious. And I forget where I heard it first, but I agree. What you now call charcuterie boards, back in the day we called those Lunchables. It's the winification of everything, and it's got to stop. But if you have to hit rock bottom before you can truly reform, the good news is we're there. Because looky here from the Wall Street Journal, the new gardening status symbol, upscale compost. And look at the subtitle. You can get manure from eucalyptus-eating goats and even a blend from Princess Diana's childhood home. That's right, compost, decaying organic matter that usually includes manure, is going artisan. In other words, it's being winified. And that just makes me want to hit the Schlitz especially hard tonight. Folks, that's what's last on our list. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Tomorrow on The List, why Ted Lasso scores in leadership. The key thing to that is you have a leader who listens. Plus, how to taste the layers of flavor in coffee. We're not looking for those bitter, burner, ashy notes. And pack portable electronics for your next road trip. It's so small, you can just throw it in your backpack or even a large purse. Tomorrow on The List.